Now, away from all that, the recent visit of the milk race to the region might just have focused attention on the super lightweight, custom-designed and highly fragile machine that is the modern racing bike. It's a machine which, despite minor refinements, has changed little in the past hundred years or so. But now an Essex engineer has taken a completely fresh look at the whole concept. The result, a lightweight racer, but with all the inbuilt strength of a Victorian bone shaker. In fact, it's as tough as old bikes, as Surrey Beddoes discovered. What makes this bicycle special is the frame. It's not in tubes like a conventional cycle. It's die cast in one, and instead of traditional steel tubing, it's made from a material new to bikes, magnesium alloy. Magnesium is used in incendiary bombs, but fortunately doesn't ignite when it's in one lump like this. It's extracted from the sea. One cubic meter of seawater produces enough magnesium for one cycle frame like this. Work on the design started almost five years ago. Engineer Frank Kirk used sophisticated computer equipment to analyze the stress on a traditional cycle frame and to create his own invention, which can be sold in the high street for about 150 pounds to amateurs like David Ovenden or people like Stephen Poulter, who turned professional after representing Britain in the 1984 Olympics. The bike, apart from being very unusual, has got the same type of angles, same position of all the equipment that goes on it as a normal bike. But there is certain advantages that I find riding it. It's a lot more rigid than a conventional bike. It has actually been tested to be one and a half times more rigid. It's very strong. It's non-corrosive, doesn't rust, and it's also very cheap. The cycle has been subjected to vigorous stress tests. It's been patented in 28 countries and production should start at the end of the month at a South End factory. We were not allowed to film there, but a 60-foot, 60 60-tonne 60 machine has been installed capable of producing a cycle frame a minute. The machine also designed by Frank Kirk. Well, it's more of a challenge than anything. The cycle frame itself is incredibly complicated. It's very, very difficult to analyse. And the background I had in the automotive industry, looking at structures, led me on to trying to analyse something that hadn't been changed for 110 years. I mean, that's phenomenal. Why hasn't anybody else bothered to do this? Well, it's the involvement of um, production technology that could produce something that's different and the advent of very, very sophisticated computers. So you were computer-aided, but what's special about this? Is it? It's light, and what else? Well, it, it's, it's light, but it's the production method that's so different. We produce a bicycle frame in just over a minute, which normally would take a very long time, or does even with a very, very large companies that have vast amounts of capital investment into production machinery. But our, our, our system literally uses something like a big jelly mould, and it's produced in one go. This creation is entirely British-backed and virtually indestructible. Our camera car failing to make a dent. Fred Kirk, though, hopes to make a dent in the market. With a million cycles a year sold in Britain, he could end up a very rich man.